development of a true rivalry two eastern programs trying to turn the corner they have found respectability now they want recognition homecoming day for the temple owls versus a near mirror image the scarlet knights of rutgers five weeks into 1985 and the owls are on a roll seeking win number three against a team with much the same makeup dick anderson's rutgers team comes in winless and hungry with a top flight defense led by All-American Tyrone Stowe. The quarterback controversy has simmered with long-term starter Eric Rusty Hochberg now number two behind strong-armed Andy Gagliardi. But with Lee Saltz coming off his best day as a college quarterback, all is looking up for the Temple Owls. Commander, start chance, get back to 500. Going to that next level. Beyond average, to the good. <laughs> Continue to be good, and then we got a chance to get on up there in the great category. This one stands in the way, and it's a good challenge. It's a challenge to each and every one of us. Because they're sound, they're solid, and they're tough. And they have those captains right down here. Temple Football 85, brought to you by Kodak Film, because time goes by. Your Delaware Valley Subaru dealers. Budweiser, for all you do, this Bud's for you. Your hometown Pizza Hut restaurants. Rosenbluth Travel, the official agency of Temple University. The people who bring you the delicious taste of Coca-Cola. By Breyer's Ice Cream, America's number one natural ice cream by Acme, your store for low prices. Setting off to find America. Temple and Rutgers. The two teams have played a pair of one-point football games in each of Bruce Arians' first two seasons. Each game a defensive battle. Early supremacy along the line of scrimmage would be critical. Dick Anderson's game plan seems clear early on. He'll take the short pass and attack the Temple linebackers. First play, Andy Gagliardi lays off to running back Matt Prescott for 16 yards and a first down. Rutgers features a talented tailback in Albert Smith who carries on the next two plays from scrimmage. He totals 15 yards on the two plays. The Knights are already in Temple territory, and the Owls are in a battle. When Smith gets four yards over right guard, it sets up the first big third down of the day. Bruce Arians calls the blitz, and linebackers Todd Bowles and Bob Filkoskis meet at the quarterback. The first threat is turned aside. Working from inside their own 20, the Owls hope to expose the soft underbelly of the Rutgers defense. Paul Palmer, seeking his ninth straight 100-yard rushing day, gets five up the middle. But on third down, fullback Shelley Poole takes the same route. He comes up short, and Rutgers will be right back in business. On second and eight, the Owls get their second early sack of the day. This one from tackle Chuck Cumro. But on third down and 11, Gagliardi has time and finds a seam in the zone occupied by wide receiver Roy Hoover, first and 10 at midfield. A rare first down pass by Rutgers, Gagliardi rolls right, and the hitch pattern connects to flanker Eric Young, first down the Temple 39. Now Gagliardi mixing his receivers, rolls left, and the bobbling catch is made by tight end Bruce Campbell at the Owls 27. But when Pilkoskitz bats one away, the Knights will have to settle for three. Nine minutes into the ball game, kicker Tom Angstadt bangs a 43-yarder through the uprights, and Rutgers has the day's first points. On offense, the Owls go into the line three straight times and come up on a fourth and one. Punter Kip Shettefeld, among the nation's leaders, gets off a 56-yarder, which rolls dead at the Rutgers eight, and the Owls' defense will hold. With Todd McNair missing due to a shoulder injury, Purvis Herter is the punt returner, and on this occasion, a 10-yard return gives the Owls field position near midfield. Third down, and Paul Palmer gets seven yards on this run over left guard. Then the flea flicker, Salt, the toss to Palmer, who hands to Willie Marshall. 
the wideout throws deep for Keith Gloucester. He's got it, but he's out of the end zone. So it's third and nine. Now Marshall, the passer, becomes Marshall, the receiver. Over the middle he goes for 16 yards and a first down. Paul Palmer then snakes his way for nine yards, and the first quarter comes to an end with the Owls just three yards from Pater. First play of quarter number two, the Owls turn to their bread and butter, Paul Palmer, and Palmer scoops the left end into the end zone. Standing up, the Owls lead seven to three. time for the defenses to take control. It is certainly to be a hard-hitting afternoon. Outside linebacker John Smith stuffs running back Dan Lipset for no gain, and Rutgers must give up the football. On offense, Paul Palmer is met by a gang tackling Rutgers defense. Midway through the second stanza, and Rutgers begins to move. Matt Prescott gets a big eight yards over left side. Then Gagliardi, who was 10 for 17 in the first half, rolls right and finds Hoover for another first down, this one near midfield. But again, the defense rises to the occasion. Temple's leading tackler, John Smith, is on the bottom of the pile again following an Albert Smith reception, and this drive is halted. The Owls on offense now with good field position. Back-to-back -back Palmer runs total 14 yards, and the Owls are at the Rutgers 37. Arians then goes for it. Gloucester is open in the end zone, but Saltz overthrows him. The Owls fail to capitalize on the turnover. And so Rutgers will turn back to basics. Matt Prescott over right guard for five before Chris D'Amico wraps him up. On third and one, Prescott on second effort alone keeps the drive alive. It's first and ten. Gagliardi then on a run pass option scoots for seven yards and another Rutgers first down. Next play. Prescott finds a small seam, and once he's past the first line of defenders, nothing but green turf stands between the Willingboro sophomore and the end zone. With a 63-yard run for a touchdown, Rutgers had mounted a 10-7 lead with only four minutes to go in the first half. The Owls have time to move, though. First down, the longest run of the day for Paul Palmer, 16 yards over left guard to the Owls' 38. But on third and two at the 46, Palmer is stopped short on this cutback attempt. The Owls face fourth and one. After much soul searching, Arians opts to kick it away. It is Rutgers who runs out the clock, taking a hard-earned 10-7 lead into the locker room. As soon as you see an old friend. It was a familiar scene as Bruce Arians worked from the blackboard with the Temple offense. All year long, the Owls have stayed close through the first 30 minutes. This afternoon had been an elongated feeling out process for the two teams. Let some of the emotion run off. For the final 30 minutes, though, it would come down to which team was capable of making the big play at the right moment. We've got to make the things happen to win. They're not going to happen unless we make them. We're capable of doing that. We're now going to go out there, and we are going to do that. We get the quarterback in our hands this half. He's going down. He's not going to throw that ball out there to some dinky halfback. When we get that ball out on the corner, we're going to make that big block, and we're going to get them yards. That's the only difference between 10 to 7 and about 21 to nothing. All right, making that plays that we're right there to make, just let it hang out and make As the wide receivers. Right now, Garzinski's at the top of the screen in place of Gloucester. They got Willie Marshall split out wide to the right. Hinnon is a wing on the right now. As Salt just threw his first pass of the game with under three minutes to play in the first quarter. Palmer for five yards to the 35. You almost concede the five to him. It's almost like we'll give you five, Paul. Just don't break a big one against us. Well, you know what happened that time, excuse me, Bruce, was the linebacker was coming on the red dog and it opened up the middle. There was nobody there and then filling the void was Paul Palmer. I was going to say that he was gambling a little bit and why not once in a while when you know Palmer's going to get the and it Stowe did unfortunately he went behind Mr. Palmer whose quickness just took over 
third down and five. They have not really had an enviable third down situation in three possessions. Third and five is no bargain. And they give to Palmer. They're going to let him do it, and he does it. Inside the 30 to the 28-yard line, stopped there by the strong safety, Lou Morrow, but a seven-yard pickup and Temple's first first down of the game. And you know what happened there? The last two times I had a third down call, they put... They kept them in the I formation, and with Shelley Poole 44 with the kickout block there to lead the way, he picked up seven when he needed only five. So when you're down, you go with your best, and the best in Temple's case is Paul Palmer. Marshall wide to the left and uh, Garzinski to the right. Hinnett now comes strong side to the right in the I formation again for Temple. They're down 3-0 to Rutgers early on. This is Palmer. Oh, what a great defensive play. Getting his feet into it was Lou Morrow. And I think that's how he upended Palmer, or else Paul might have been off to the races. Well, it looked like Trent Cornelius, the right guard, was the guy that was supposed to lead the blocking for Paul Palmer that time, but he got tangled up with Morrow. Let's take a look at it again with uh, taking the pitches. Palmer sweeping, trying to wait for the block from Cornelius, and it really never got there. There's Morrow getting tangled up with Cornelius, and he just reached back and was able to pull down number six. Gain of one, second down nine for the Owls. That's Gloucester in motion. And here's a pitch to Palmer. Here's a reverse to Marshall. Looking in the end zone, throws a pass downfield, and it is caught out of the field of play. It is caught by Keith Gloucester, but to Rutgers' credit, they were not fooled at all. They had double coverage on Gloucester. Number two, Daryl Brittingham, and number 21, Steve Twombly, both there. I don't know if Marshall's ever been in a punt, pass, and kick contest, but this is a pretty good throw, and it's excellent execution. It's the flea flicker, and watch this pass. He just ran out of real estate at the back of the end zone, but the ball was extremely well thrown. The man, Brittingham, was beaten, and it just didn't work, and it seems that last week also, Temple just ran out of real estate stayed outside the end zone. He doesn't mind if he's beaten out of the field of play, I can tell you that. Third and nine. Gagliardi, or rather, uh, Salts over the middle, and it's complete at the 13-yard line. Caught by Willie Marshall, number 84, and that will be a Temple first down in the grasp of Darrell Brittingham, the senior free safety out of Delaware. Well, the cornerback, Gene Austin, 26 here, gives up to the safety. Who's supposed to come up? Is that Morrow or uh, Brittingham? And Brittingham was a little... Number two, as we look at it from behind Lee Saltz, the seam pass to Willie Marshall. And Marshall with the good hands holds on knowing he's getting a hit from behind. First down to 10 to go Temple to the Rutgers 12-yard line. This Scarlet Knight defensive unit, a very game group of young men. Here's Palmer, he's free, and he crawls to the one. Well, that time he looked like a coal miner looking through a tunnel trying to find an open hole and he is at his best as he goes searching for real estate. We look at it from behind the Rutgers defense. Palmer just coming up to the line. Now he cuts it back against the grain, tries to get away from his own blockers as well as some of the Rutgers defenders and reaching for that goal line. Not quite enough. They spot the ball outside the two-yard line saying that's where his knee touched. It's second and less than one. Palmer falls forward. He may have the first down. He does not have the touchdown. White Lou Morrow made a great play to save it that time, coming up from safety. Nobody was out there on that left side of the Temple defense, right side of the Rutgers uh, defense to make the play on Morrow. He made a great stop against Paul Palmer. And uh, Temple will not get on the scoreboard here in the first quarter because time has expired. But when we resume action, it'll be third down and apparently less than a yard to go for the first down. Rutgers leads Temple three to nothing. We have completed one quarter at the vet in Philadelphia. We'll be back right after this. I know. Temple cheerleaders in anticipation of what they hope will be a touchdown here as we begin play in the second quarter. It is third down and less than a yard. It is third down and two for a touchdown for Temple. They trail Rutgers 3 0. The pitch is to Palmer. He gets a block from Poole, goes outside and untouched into the end zone. Touchdown, Temple. Well, it was Shelly Poole, 44, the fullback, that led the blocking on that sweep to the open side of the field, the wide side, and Paul Palmer just coasting his way in for his seventh touchdown. Rutgers a strong safety, made an intelligent play, came in, he tried to make the stop, but Palmer, with his great speed, was able to beat him outside. Look for number 14 of Rutgers. Morrow, there was his opportunity. And finally, Palmer just picks and chooses, and he goes in for six. Garzinski will hold, right to attempt the extra point, the placement, and the kick by Bill is up, and it is good. 
And so on the first play of the second quarter, Temple has taken the lead. There's a timeout on the field again. It's now Temple 7 and Rutgers 3. We'll be back right after this. It's been a long afternoon for him, but he may wind up with the last lap of this game. He came through in the clutch. That's the bottom line. He only completed three passes all day. You know, oddly enough, the last game I did in his stadium, Temple, West Virginia, last year, he, oh, he didn't complete a pass until there was a minute and a half to go in the game. Oh, just out of the outstretched reach of the intended receiver. Number 29. Matt Prescott out of the backfield, who obviously, that'll answer your question about the hamstring. He looks okay. Temple here defensively really can't go into a total pass prevent because they don't want to give up too much yard to set up the field goal. There's the combination that just hooked up for six points and put the Owls in a position to win this football game. Gagliardi, 15 out of 27, 133 yards, but two interceptions today. It is second down and 10. This is the screen, and it goes nowhere. He completed the pass to Dan Lipset, but the defensive play was made by John Smith, who's come alive in the last five minutes here, Bruce. He sure has. The sign of a good football player, someone who comes and rises to the occasion when the pressure's on. The screen is set up to Lipset, and Smith just comes on and takes a one-on-one -on -one and gets the tackle. And Dick Anderson has utilized a timeout. I believe that is a second for Rutgers here in the half, or not. Is it only their first? I think it's their first. So they have two to go. It'll be third down and 13 now for the Scarlet Knights, and I presume they'll have to throw the ball downfield. There's your whole story in a nutshell. Temple leads by one. They lost last year by one. They won the year before by one. And Rutgers leads this series eight to six. Cool in the gang, ready to go on with a homecoming concert. Well, this is pretty cool right now. I don't know how the fans could enjoy anything as much as this finish. Rutgers needs a bundle here. They need 14 yards, and he's got to go up top with it. And he really has two plays, because Rutgers will go for it on fourth if they have to. I believe I was right about Rutgers. They did utilize a timeout earlier. We've been informed they have only one left. So that was their second timeout. It is third down and 13. Gagliardi out of the backfield, and the big hit at the 23-yard line on Prescott as they throw short again. So now they're faced with fourth down and about seven to keep the drive alive. I don't know what I would question that call, Bruce. Here's another timeout. Well, there are times when you go for half the distance needed, but in a situation like that, you have to go all the way. You don't know if anybody was open or anybody wasn't. Let us pause five seconds for station identification. This is the TCS Sports Television Network. This is WTAF TV 29 in Philadelphia. It is do or die for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights as you look at the gentleman who at the moment is the hero of the game, Willie Marshall, who just a moment ago caught a touchdown pass of 13 yards from Lee Saltz. On the other side of the field, Dick Anderson talking with his senior quarterback, Joe Gagliardi. They are fourth down and seven at their own 23-yard line, and they need to sustain the drive, obviously, to have any chance of a field goal. Well, Gagliardi has to go up top. He has to throw the football, and it's all come down to this one play. It may come down to other plays, but first, he has to get by this one because this is it. Rutgers with no timeouts remaining. It's a rather dangerous situation, situation. Uh, even if they should pick up the first down. The only other way they're going to be able to stop the clock is by moving the sticks, of course. A player injury or an incompleted pass. So here's your football game. Fourth and seven. First down and ten, Rutgers at the 39-yard line. Eric Young with a leaping catch. And Gagliardi put that one right in his chest. Now the hurry-up offense. What a game-saver that was. Now they've got to move the ball quickly, but they've got to do things with rhyme and reason. Gagliardi stops the clock on first down. And a good call over the head of Eric Young, the intended receiver. So they'll come up second down and 10, just shy of their 40-yard line. 
They say that Gagliardi doesn't have nearly the arm that Rusty Hochberg does, uh, but you've got to love his leadership ability and his, uh, his intestinal fortitude. I mean, he just simply will not quit. He had a great quote during the week. He said, I know I will not fail. That's confidence for you. He sat back there in the pocket, and he completed the pass that he had to. Second down and 10. Rutgers trailing by one. Throws the home run ball on the near sideline. He's got a man open, and it's intercepted by Temple. Purvis Herter. was intercepted four times last Saturday. That was his third interception today. But he put the ball right on the money for Aaron Gibson. His only shortcoming may have been that he pulled the trigger a little bit late. Gibson was wide open five seconds earlier, or even two seconds earlier. But Herder closes on the football and is able to make the interception. It was a little late in developing. Now watch Herder go up on this play and just make a tremendous interception. Both both players did not have the ball. It was Herter, clearly, who had it, and Gagliardi took some shot as he threw the football. Now he has to just watch. And Rutgers is unable to stop the clock. We're under a minute to play in the game, and Temple can take three more snaps, and Rutgers is helpless to do anything about it. What a great play by Purvis Herter, but I'll tell you something, Bruce. Gagliardi put that ball right into Gibson's mitts, and it was just a matter of who would come away with the ball. The ball is certainly out there. Both players went for it. You know, if they both come down with it, the offensive man gets the possession. But it was clearly a case where Herter won the battle. So in most heartbreaking fashion, Nick Anderson's Rutgers Scarlet Knights are going to go 0-4 and one tie. That's it. Bruce Arians walking across the field to meet Nick Anderson. As the Temple Owls fighting uphill all season long, having started 0-3, they've come back with successive victories over East Carolina, Cincinnati, and Rutgers, but this one was a hard stopper. A 13-yard touchdown pass from Lee Saltz to Willie Marshall with about two minutes to play in the game. Following a most controversial call, on a personal foul call, and now Dick Anderson is walking off the field with the officials, letting his feelings be known. And, you know, the call may have been right, but you got to have a lot of guts to make that call at that point in the football game and under those circumstances, I would think. Well, it was certainly a controversial call at that point in time. Temple executed a beautiful play after that. No one can question it. But what we're, what we're questioning is the opportunity that Temple had to go in there and score the winning touchdown, and they did. So let's all take a moment here to catch our breath. This game is history. The 15th meeting of Rutgers and Temple, and for the seventh time, the Temple Owls have come away with a win by the skin of their teeth. 14 to 13, the final. We'll be back with our post-game report right after this. Hasn't earned one yet, but he's got one in his grasp at the moment. Dick Anderson of Rutgers. Third down and nine to keep the football. Gagliardi. Gonna run it. Now gonna throw it. Intercepted by Temple. And then he, oh, I thought he threw the ball up for grabs. His knee touched the ground. Ooh, that was close. Yeah, I don't think that anybody, look at they're still fighting for the ball. Now the referee is marking it's a dead ball yeah, at midfield. John Smith, guy we just said we haven't heard his name mentioned too often today. Gagliardi has time, but throws over the middle. It's always going to be crowded over the middle. Look at the great one-handed catch by Smith. And he goes down on one knee. Oh, he Bingo's knows he dead right down. there. And he threw the ball up in the air. And Rutgers said, looky, we got it back again, you know. Well, that would have been a real giveaway, but Smith knew what he was doing. Great one-handed catch, and then he goes down, and he knows the dead ball right there. Back live. You couldn't ask for a better finish. 49-yard line. Temple could still win it. Here's the option to Palmer. The flag is down, and he's trapped in his backfield at the 48. But a marker is down. The clock stopped with 3.10 to play in the game. Alec Hoke has not been fooled once today, I don't believe, and the preliminary sign is holding against Temple. That'll be a very There's costly John, penalty. John Smith on the sidelines out of Penn Charter in Philadelphia, the Interacademic League. 
big interception for him, his third on the season, and it couldn't have come at a better time as far as the Owls are concerned. Yeah, you mentioned the academics. We don't dwell on it enough, Harry, but he's a very, very bright young man. His coach up there at Penn Charter, Bill Gallagher, former running back for Notre Dame, played under Ira Persegan with the Irish and out of Father Judge High School where he was an all-Catholic here in Philadelphia. Holding on the offense, first down, 20 to go. Remember, Temple spent the time out with about eight minutes to go, so they only have two left, and that may figure prominently later. Clock starts to move again. It is first down and 20 for the Temple Owls, back at their 39-yard line. Salt throws a flare out here to Palmer, who can't hold on to the ball. He had a lot of running room up that sideline, too. It's almost like a screen that they set up. They bring about two or three linemen out to set up the downfield blocking. And Palmer just lost concentration, took his eyes off, and now it's up to Bruce Arians, a former college quarterback, to come up with the right play here on second down and long. With the incompletion, the clock stops, of course, 2.56 to play. Saltz is two out of nine for 40 yards throwing the football today. A far cry from his 14 out of 20 for over 300 yards last week. But this Rutgers defense is not chopped liver, I can tell you that. They have just been so game and so scrappy. Saltz play action pass. Looking downfield, Arch is one, he's got Garzinski, and he caught the ball at the 36-yard line. Twenty four yards from Lee Saltz to Andy Garzinski. This is like a parachute behind enemy lines the way he touches this into Garzinski. There's four Rutgers defenders around him and the ball is right in Garzinski's hands on the run. Saltz couldn't have thrown it any better. From the 36 yard line of Rutgers, Saltz back to pass again. Palmer swinging out of the backfield at the 30. Puts a move on the linebacker and gets to the 26. He's tackled there by George Piquel. That's 10 yards and very close to another first down by the Owls. And this crowd has come alive. Other than the touchdown run by Palmer in the second quarter, they have had very little to cheer about today. Palmer had just dropped one, so he made sure that he cradled the pumpkin on that time. It is enough for a first down. 2.20 to play. Palmer tackled behind the line of scrimmage by number 41, Tyrone Stowe, and also George Pacal. They have played a whale of a game. They're going to use a timeout here to uh, talk it over as we have 2.10 left to go, and Arians and Spencer Prescott, the fellow there in the white sweater, another former college running back, as we look again at the nice play by Stowe getting in on Palmer to stop him in his tracks and maybe cost him some yardage a loss on the play. You know, right before that, Sam, for the first time this afternoon, we actually saw Palmer come out of the backfield in that zone coverage where the linebackers drop back and just really a possession type of uh, pass call by Saltz. Everything else has been downfield for 15, 25 yards. At this time, TCS would like to thank the following individuals for their assistance in the production of today's telecast. From Rutgers University, Athletic Director Fred Grudinger, Head Coach Dick Anderson, the Assistant Athletic Director Tom Peters, and Sports Information Director Bob Smith. And from Temple University, Athletic Director Gavin White, Assistant Athletic Director Mike Fetchko, the Head Coach Bruce Arians, the Sports Information Director Al Schreier, and the Assistant Sports Information Director Michael Kane. We thank you, gentlemen, one and all. I think Temple realizes now that this is the last drive. They're down to one timeout. They're not going to get the football back if Rutgers gets the ball anyway. So this is do or die, this series. It is second down and 12 at the 28-yard line of Rutgers. Temple needs a touchdown and a conversion to win it. Rutgers needs to keep them out of the end zone for their first victory of the year. Option, Palmer. Stowe. And another great play by Tyrone Stowe. You are precisely right, Harry. The 6'2", uh, 225 junior out of Passaic, New Jersey, just absolutely would not be fooled on the play. And uh, once again, here's where the sidelines helped the Rutgers defense. They went with the option toss to the short side of the field. Oh, oh. A personal foul after the play. Apparently a dead ball foul against Rutgers. Let's see if we can find it. All right, the pitch on the option from Saltz to Palmer. He's got no running room. The sidelines and Stowe both close in a hurry. And look at the hit. Out of bounds past the white strip, and that's about four yards wide. Mm. I don't know. Did I don't know. Did either. it look intentional to you? He was slowing down. He certainly didn't hit him flagrant. I don't think I don't think it has to be flagrant in that situation. Personal foul. 
on the defense, first down. As a matter of fact, most times, the defender doesn't know where the sidelines is, and that's why he's got to be thinking all the times. And a, a Pele like that in this situation, the absolute cardinal sin of all cardinal sin. I believe that was Lou Cipriano. Was it number 80? Here's Salt, front arch, one in the end zone, and it is caught! Touchdown, Marshall! Unbelievable! is broken loose here at the vet in Philadelphia. Streamers coming down from the stands. This is basically an alley-oop. Harold Carmichael earned a living doing this with the Philadelphia Eagles. Salts with the short touch. Marshall leaps over the uh, intended, or the defender, and he comes down with the ball in front of Gene Austin for the touchdown. And for Willie Marshall. And the conversion by Wright, the all-important conversion, gives Temple a 14-13 lead. But we still have a minute 57 to play. Let's take a look at it again. Following that controversial personal foul call against Rutgers, Lee Saltz wastes no time in throwing the 13-yard touchdown pass. You know, I'm a little surprised that they put it up down here. They have plenty of time left to go with them, two minutes to go in the game, and they still want to to Willie Marshall, and he had, what, two defenders there and a linebacker closing. I thought they'd keep it on the ground with Palmer. They're only, what, on the, inside the 20-yard line. Yeah, this young man is happy, that's for sure. Willie Marshall, who beat Austin and Will Dunster, and a junior from Brown Mills, New Jersey. Just a fine individual effort. And you're exactly right, Harry. It's, a, it's not only a, a dubious call at that particular point, because they had time, and they had a timeout remaining, but I think the feeling there was to go get it, and Arians is such an incredible coach in that regard he goes for the juggler and he knows that Marshall's got the ability to go get the football but what it does now with a minute 57 Angstad has a chance to win the football game with the field goal for Rutgers if they can just maintain possession get a couple first downs and get it down inside the 40 yard line I have a feeling that was as the Owls take possession they are determined to get their ground game untracked first play the option Salt turns it inside for nine yards second and one Palmer behind Reinstra for a first down. Then the pitch to Palmer, he turns the corner for 14 yards and another first down. But on third and six at the Rutgers 45, Luis Morrow meets Palmer behind the line of scrimmage and the Owls must give it up. Now Dick Anderson goes to the hot hand. Matt Prescott, in route to his best day as a Scarlet Knight, gets 10 yards right up the middle. Two plays later, right up that same seam he goes again, for 10 yards and another first down, he's over the 100-yard mark. First down at the 47, Prescott tries the middle, then bounces outside. It's a 15-yard gain, first down at the 38. The Owls force a third and long. Gagliardi fades and fires, but it's broken up by Eddie Parker. Rutgers will have to try for three. But Angstad's kick is well short and wide from 51 yards away. It is still a three-point ball game late in the third quarter. With time nearly expired in that stanza, Gagliardi gets the hot hand himself. He hits Greg Raffaelli over the middle for 16 yards and a first down. Then another backup running back, Reynold Walbrook, gets nine yards to midfield. Then Gagliardi fakes to Prescott, then hits Prescott over the middle, and as the third quarter ends, Rutgers leads by three, and they're on the move. the fourth quarter opens, Gagliardi runs with the football. Off tackle down to the Temple 24, but here the drive stalls. They call on Angstad once more. This time, he comes up wide left. The Owls are still within three at 10-7. On the Owls' next series, the Rutgers defense stiffens. Palmer is nailed behind the line of scrimmage for a two-yard loss. Plays which had been clockwork through the first five games were going nowhere as Dick Anderson's defense refuses to yield. The Knights get the ball back at their own 37. On third and two, there goes Prescott once more. He finds daylight outside the Owls' containment and rumbles for 28 yards to the Temple 27-yard line. But when Prescott tries the left side and loses a yard, here comes Angstad again for his fourth attempt. This one from 42 yards out splits the uprights, and with 9.25 remaining in the ball game, Rutgers carries the momentum and the lead 13-7. The Owls, now down by six, need a touchdown to win it. 
first down on their own 31. Saltz finds fullback Shelly Poole out of the backfield. He's got it, and by the time he is collared, it's a 23-yard gain into Rutgers territory. Back to Paul Palmer. He takes the pitch around left end for another eight yards. Now Palmer will motor off the right side of the Owls' offensive line. He dips and drives for 15 additional yards. The Owls are at the Rutgers 23-yard line as the fourth quarter reaches its midway point. Palmer up the middle for three yards. It's second and seven. But on his fourth consecutive carry, Palmer loses the football as he is hit at the Rutgers 16. Linebacker Matt Bachman is on the football, and the drive is history. Rutgers is in command. Gagliardi leads his offense onto the field, knowing this could be the put-away possession. He keeps off the right side, five yards. He hits his tight end, Bruce Campbell, for a big first down to the Rutgers 26. Then Prescott gets his final 10 yards of the day. Another first down at the Rutgers 36. But when Walbrook is nailed for a three-yard loss, it is third and eight. Rutgers coach Dick Anderson calls timeout to set up the play of the game. Another first down could seal the win, but somewhere in the Owls' defensive huddle, a hero is waiting. The call of the 93, 93, I just went out wide. I saw, we knew they were hooking up all day. Backs come out of the back, hooking up all day. So when he hooked up, I just read it. And I broke with the quarterback's eyes. And I was really diving to knock it down, but just stuck in my hand, stuck there. I was looking to run. My feet got from under me. I was bringing it up to jump up, hit my face mask, and let it go. Complex, aggressive, determined, consistent. Number 45 is certainly not just another guy named John Smith. He is a hard-hitting defensive back leading the Owls in tackles, reaching double figures in four of six contests. But there is also an intellectual side and a professional dream which made the difference when football scholarship offers were coming his way. Well, believe it or not, Temple was my last choice, you know, because Wayne, Wayne Harden was here, you know, and I, I, I didn't kind of like that program. Wayne Harden was here, but um, I met Bruce Arians and um, Coach Prescott, and they came to my school, and I like what they're talking about. You know, education was first, that's what they told me. And I came down here to visit, and all the other schools I, recruit, I got recruited, they didn't want me to major engineering. And they told me, we'll give you a shot at major engineering, you know, because my background came from Penn Charter High School, which is a great, great high school. I knew I could do it. So when I came here, they gave me a shot, and that's why I came here. The Owls defense plays with eight men on the line of scrimmage. It is a hard-nosed group. But for John Smith, there is more than just the crashing of helmets. He must carry that thinking man's approach onto the football field, reading, reacting, and tackling. Mostly that's a read defense, you know. I, I'm not designed or blitz, but it's whatever the offense stuff, they adjust, then I might go. If not, I have a tight end or whatever. I'm, I'm just flowing, you know. I read, I watch films, and I just flow to the ball. Because most times, the tight ends are the ones that's blocking on me, and I'm usually quicker than tight ends, and I just, just flow across the back, you know. Johnny is a fine football player. What he lacks in height, he makes up in strength and, and quickness. He's got good leverage, and he's about 200 pounds, and, and he can run. Well, he's a real fine running back in high school, and he's got good hands. He proved that on the great interception, and, and what a play it was. He's been probably the most consistent football player all year on defense, and uh, can't say enough about the guy. Smith's interception, the biggest single defensive play of the season, for the Temple Owls. They will take over 51 yards away from a victory. On first down though, the Owls are flagged for holding. It does not get any easier, now first and 20, 61 yards away. When Saltz and Palmer fail to connect, it is second and 20 with time, a major factor. Willie Marshall is facing double coverage, so the Owls must turn to a new source for the biggest play of his career, Cardinal Doherty's own Andy Garzinski. Well, they have me come in motion from the side, and I break across the field behind the linebackers while uh, the other split-end receiver takes the corner deep. That clears a nice path for me to come open, and it was wide open. And the, the only person, the person that made the tackle was the corner, I think. Right. He came up hard after he saw me coming across the middle of my hands, and uh, Lee hit me with a perfect pass. It was right in the numbers. A huge first down for Temple, now at the Rutgers 25. But Rutgers does not wish to leave Veterans Stadium winless. Paul Palmer is stopped by an aggressive core for a loss of two. He is nailed on the right sideline for a gain of only one yard. 
But this time, the aggressive defense will cost the Scarlet Knights a late hit personal foul. It will give the Owls a first down at the Rutgers 13. Arian sends in the play. Despite the double coverage, the Owls will go to the high flyer. So it's a quick drop, an alley-oop pass for Willie Marshall at the goal line. Marshall outleaps a pair of defenders, and when he lands, the football game is tied 13 to 13. On closer inspection, the remarkable athletic ability of Willie Marshall even more apparent. The perfect timing. The lone owl among a host of Scarlet Knights makes that extra effort. And when Billy Wright keeps the extra point streak intact, the vet is rocking. The Owls lead by one with under two minutes remaining. But Gagliardi is not done just yet. He hits Prescott for a seven-yard gain. Then comes right back to flanker Eric Young. A 17-yard completion for a first down at the Rutgers 40. Now Gagliardi must go downfield. Aaron Gibson is momentarily open as he streaks down the sideline. But suddenly onto the scene comes cornerback Purvis Herder. He leaps and lands with the football. An electric Bruce Arians is on top of the celebrating pile. The Owls have made the big plays at the right times. For the third straight season, the Temple Rutgers matchup is a one point football game, but this time the Owls emerge victorious. They have fought back to 500 now, and as Bruce Arian said at halftime, it is a good team still with the opportunity to reach for greatness. Okay, what do you like better? Take in, take out. Like we're three and three, and we've got to now go home. We can't take yeah, yeah, that yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. We've learned a lesson today, a good one. Every game lasts 60 minutes. <laughs> Where you at, Purvis? Kids play hard. Uh, we didn't play very well, and I'll take the blame for that. Obviously, we weren't as prepared uh, that we should have been. Uh, they did a fine job of shutting down our running game. We probably should have thrown the football more, but we got ourselves in too many passing, bad second down plays, and I'll take the blame for that. We got ourselves in third and long too many times. The draw has been a great play for us all year. Today, Rutgers shut it down. And <clears throat> defensively, I can't say enough about the kids. You know, we've had a lot of injuries, and the kids just keep fighting and battling. Yardage doesn't beat you. Points do, and they kept them out of the end zone and off the scoreboard when it mattered. And Lee and Willie made the big play. Was it difficult to communicate to them through the week that Rutgers' whole season came down to not losing to Temple, that they had to win today to, to even be considered anything for the year? No, because we had to win today, too, and, and our kids knew that. It wasn't a matter of being flat. Uh, they made some plays, and, and we made some plays, but uh, <clears throat> I think the injuries took its toll a little bit on our defense. We just can't gel because always a guy missing, and uh, right now, 14-13 win over Rutgers, I'll take it anyway and uh, never say that our team was outplayed. I mean, we were outcoached, I'll admit that for sure. Three straight years, one point either way during the Bruce Arians era. What does it say about the rivalry between the two schools? Oh, I think it's a great rivalry. I think it's going to stay this way for a long time, I think. You know, it's a, it's a game that, that ought to, you know, really sell tickets and be a lot of fun every year. This Buds for all you guys who 